Accurately tracking business expenses is obviously crucial to any business, but it's also a lot of manual, tedious energy that's not focused on advancing the core mission. Thankfully, modern automation software is changing that, and not just in the future, but now. AI and automation can drastically reduce the effort required to stay on top of expenses and do it instantly instead of waiting for the end of the month. To find out how, I caught up with Teresa Clark. She's a fractional CFO with over 30 years of experience, and lately she helps nonprofit organizations leverage automation to maximize their impact, even with limited resources. You know, I think automation is, it's its really a game changer. Before I had experience with seeing these automation platforms and softwares, this is what expense reports look like. They, there's this endless cycle of, you know, copy and paste. You get the statement, you copy the transactions, you create the Google sheet, you share it with the people, you chase the receipts. I, it's just, it becomes this ongoing, really feels like an endless cycle of just, you know, you get one month finally buttoned up and then it's like that month's ended and now you're back on to doing it again. And really, that's if you're lucky. Sometimes these things can linger out. So I think that the beauty of automation and tools, software like Ramp, and and there's others in the market, but it's by far my favorite, is just that it it takes these things, takes the, the energy that you're spending, moves it away from that repetitive Repetitive stuff and get you back into the more meaningful work. Kind of that, I, I would really love to see the automation happen in, in clients I'm working with because it moves them to actually focusing on their mission, the forward looking work about what they really want to be up to. Do you have any like specific examples of things that automation has helped you out with? I love the feature that involves vendor invoicing because then when something arrives in my inbox from someone who's provided a service um, or done a project for me and I need to pay them, it's as really as simple as forwarding that email to a customized email address. And then that invoice is brought into the billing side, then automates and follows the policies that you've set in place. So, um, which is really kind of another area I can, I can talk Talk more about that I really love. But on that particular invoice, then it routes through approvals and then um, we'll send out those payments. And in the in the in-between, some really cool things is it'll collect the W-9. So you have to collect the form that that you know tells us what, what kind of entity they are and how whether or not they they need to receive a 1099 at the end of the year. And so the fact that that is collected on your behalf and you don't have to go ask the vendor for that, it's an efficient uh, extra step there you can skip, as well as then the payment arrangements. So whether that vendor wants to provide their ACH information or would like to receive a check, that's all going to happen. You just get to schedule when the money goes out of your account and you can have confidence and even get confirmation that they've received their payment. Another feature that I love is the policy checks. I'm working with yeah. um, nonprofits that don't have really a business owner who's watching expenses. Sometimes um, they, the need for accountability is really, it, it's really high. And I'm sure business owners would even appreciate not having to look at all these things to have some ability to put in some, uh, what maybe what you call spend philosophies that if you're what you're able to do is you're able to set what the spending philosophies and maybe realms of, of approval are and then the system's going to flag and going to block anything that first of all is out of your spending policy uh, for example i have a nonprofit who will not pay for alcohol at a dinner well that would be a, a, a policy that would be flagged um, in the spend automatically using ai uh, another one with nonprofits they don't pay sales taxes in most states and so again another automatic feature where, boom, an invoice with sales tax is going to be pulled out immediately to look at. Here's what this looks like in Ramp. At the top of it all, you start with your spending policy, and this can be a simple plain text document, and Ramp gives you the basic tools for editing this. But also, there are more fine-grained controls for specific rules about common spending, like how much should employees spend on flights, when is it okay to book upgrades, and you can even set a custom per diem amount as part of your policy. Now, under the general policy, you can set automated sub-policies or rules that can automate approvals and routing for you. If your team is regularly expensing, I don't know, $25 ride shares, and you don't need to review those every time, you can create a policy that automatically approves those expenses. 
So really then also on the approval side of things, it's going to allow things to be routed based on preset logic. So preset rules about if a purchase is over $1,000, then it needs to be seen by the supervisor of an employee. Or if it's over you know, 5000 it needs to be viewed by uh, an additional um, layer of, of leadership potentially. So um, what I love is it's just really, it's going to improve compliance, these AI tools and accountability without creating a bunch of manual work. A lot of times those best practices are just avoided because we don't have enough staff to do it or we don't have enough time to do it. And then another feature that I love is the AI is able to flag duplicates and um, activity that's out of the norm, but instantly. So it's not a process someone's going to do manually once a month or every quarter. It's going to happen instantly. Automations can route targeted expenses to different approvers. If, let's say, a rideshare goes over $100, you might want to manually review that or escalate it to a higher level approver. Maybe there are some transactions that you do want to be handled by automation, but you also want a little more oversight. You can add a simple notification for these transactions to alert a manager when spend happens that matches your rules. And you can even enable Ramp's AI agents to handle these expenses to either approve them automatically or flag them when something looks questionable. Like maybe there's an accidental duplicate expense or maybe a monthly subscription fee is surprisingly high this month. The AI agents can flag it. These agents can handle over 10,000 transactions per day, 24 hours a day, and they're trained on your policy and your historical approvals. So they work with over 99% accuracy, which is frankly a whole lot closer to perfect than I am. You know, credit cards and spending on, you know, corporate cards tends to be the place where the greatest backlog happens. And so some of those automation features that I love, I love that there is automation that will read the receipts. So not only is it easier to get receipts now submitted, then receipts are also read read with um, technology, with AI. And so it's going to reduce manual entries. And I mean, come on, we're people, uh, errors are, are, are pretty obvious. So it reduces errors. Now, with your policy and your automations in place, you're ready to accept receipts and invoices and let Ramp automatically take care of them for you. Any spend that's made on a Ramp card gets automatically captured and coded. And if your policy requires additional details, like an image of the receipt, for example, the employee making the purchase just gets a notification in the moment with a prompt to take a picture of the receipt on their phone. Assuming that everything is copacetic between the expense and your policy, that's the last time your employee will ever have to think about it. And your automations can handle approvals and log the expense in your ERP. The types of expenses that we incur can be anywhere from, you know, meals and entertainment, kind of in-person expenditures. Online purchases are a very big part of what we do. Just, you know, the need to order something, the um, subscription-based is the other probably primary kind of expenses that we see. What are some like challenges that come about that? I don't know, like subscriptions is it, like easy to lose track of subscriptions that are happening. Maybe you don't use them anymore. Or, I don't know. What are some of the the more yeah. difficult things about tracking expenses? And I guess also on top of that, like what's the the cost of getting it wrong? I think one of the biggest difficulties is that it's just time consuming. Uh, it consumes a lot of time in an organization to track business expenses, to get the receipts done, to get them coded correctly, to get all of that done timely. And it really just time consuming for everyone. I also think most people on the front line and in the spending roles this isn't important to them. You know, they have, they have something to do. They have a mission to accomplish. They have work that needs to be done. And so all of this just creates a great frustration. Another thing I think is really a difficult part of tracking business expenses is that it creates high friction and a lot of times low accountability inside the finance world. So what that looks like is, you know, the finance person chasing the receipts to kind of become known as the person you avoid because, you know, if they see you, they're probably going to ask you, where's that receipt that you're missing? <laughs> and then it just, the the whole tediousness of it, I think, just creates an environment where sometimes there's low accountability with what's happening in the spending side. And some of the downsides that I see in organizations of getting this wrong is just that financial reports are incomplete. They sometimes don't have all the transactions of what's happened. And then also financial reports just become un unreliable. Uh, when you're in a place where it's taking a month to get all of the expenses in for your business, when you're looking at a financial report, you're not looking at anything that represents reality as of today. You're looking at sort of a historical document that's, tw who knows, 30, 45 days old. And it, it can really force a business owner and leader to move slow, to um, not know reality or maybe 
maybe move too quickly without knowing reality. So there, there's some real impacts of this and, and just the organization's ability to say yes to what they need to do or know when to put the brakes on and say no. You've done a lot of work with nonprofits, and you also mentioned that you, you've done work as, as an auditor. I'm, I'm kind of curious, how does this impact auditing? Is this like uh, you mentioned that maybe the, the records are incomplete? Does this mean that when it comes audit time, there's just now a bunch of like you have to like make up for work that you didn't do in the past? Or is there also like the potential that you lose funding as like a or you lose your nonprofit status? Great question. You know, I do think that all of this has a, a huge impact on audit preparation. You know, when you're that far back and getting your business expenses in, it's going to take you longer to close your accounting year. It's going to make you less likely to be ready when your auditors are ready to come and get the work done. And then the experience that you're going to have with your auditors. I mean, if you're back in the you know, manual processes and your audit firm is trying to live in the, you know, the the modern time of being able to audit even remotely, they just don't end up having access to what they need. And then your staff has to spend all this time digging through papers and files and, and copying and pasting and emailing versus a tool that can automate things and that can digitize them and also document the approval processes that are present because of your internal controls and kind of safeguards. An audit firm is going to be highly skilled at being able to navigate that and going to get through things more quickly, hopefully get your audit wrapped up, it, minimize the interruptions to the staff during the audit period of time, and um, it just expedite things far more effectively. You bring up you know, the compliance side or nonprofits potentially losing funding. You know, auditors often perform for a nonprofit that receives federal funding, what's called a single audit. And a single audit has a ton of controls that have to be tested. And so in an environment where things are done manually, the ability to achieve this is really pretty low when it's reliant on people. There's just natural ability for errors and oversight. And so I think that, yes, a, a tool that that automates business expenses and automates the the approval processes and those checks and balances is going to strengthen their ability to pass single audit requirements and to really gain trust with funding sources. Zana, do you have any more like uh, practical tips or hacks or habits for staying on top of this expense tracking? You know, to stay on top of these things, I think it always begins with setting a culture of accountability. And that really, it's it's something that starts at the top. I mean, the tone of this at the top of an organization that will set the, you know, habit of being accountable and of treating these things like they're important. It's going to matter whether you're using technology or not. I also think, you know, as an organization, you got to build some best practices inside of your organization. Create those philosophies of how you spend and how you manage resources. And I also think that a leader that supports the culture and then really does um, get involved when business expenses get out of control is, is a really important thing to have as a habit before you even think about technology and software. So I'm getting the impression that there's a lot of time to be saved with automation, but practically speaking, how much? And what kind of real world impact is Teresa seeing in the organizations that she works with? Like, again, I, I don't do your job. You you do your job. <laughs> so I don't have like a strong sense of all of the things that, that teams like yours are, are, are tasked with. But it sounds like there's quite a bit of the work that is able to be automated to make a lot quicker. So I don't know if you have like an estimate for the average team. How much time are they saving with with automation? I can tell you some some pretty good case studies and and clients that I've worked with to implement Ramp as a solution have often experienced the reduction in the hours that their team needs to spend in this area. And that doesn't always mean staff are cut. Most of the time what that means um, is that people are freed up to go do mission, frontline, service level work instead of having to be involved in the compliance back office accounting work. And so I've seen that over and over again. One of my clients who is a $2 million um, organization reduced their need for an accounting staff person doing that manual work by 20 hours a week by implementing RAMP. Um, I had another one who's a $4 million nonprofit who removed a part-time staff position from the business function and redirected that member to um, to their mission uh, side of, of staffing. Wow. Okay. So that's pretty yeah. significant then. Yeah. Very significant, actually. And I guess you kind of already answered this question a little bit, but maybe you have some specific examples of like, what are, what are these organizations and people doing with this re reclaimed time? Um, it sounds like there's other non- 
compliance, non-accounting type stuff that they can work on. Maybe there's also higher level accounting type thinking and planning that it allows for. Yeah. You know, my experience has been when staff are freed up from doing these repetitive tasks that are important, but now able to be done with a tool like AI, um, they repurpose those people into other areas of their organization. Uh, that's the exact positions can vary, but they often are positions that have been needs to maybe grow or to serve better the population that they're that they're in the mission to do and so they've been able to relocate those people to other positions and and not have to completely move them out of the finance function they can still be involved just going to take a lot less time and then use those resources that way i'll also say as a business owner you know personally starting out with ramp when i started my business has been a game changer because i never had to hire those positions and as a business owner i'm personally able to spend that time that would have been spent on finance and accounting related matters. And I'm able to turn that time into things that grow my business and things that serve my clients, whether it's an additional project that I might be able to deliver in a month. It's just been a, it, it's allowed me to focus on the things that really are why I'm in business and why I started my consulting work, which is to go out there and help those nonprofits. There's generally a lot of talk about, you know, AI replacing jobs and like concern and consternation about it. But I think kind of what you're talking about there highlights it like, Generally, you know, organizations are trying to do something, right? Uh-huh. They're trying to solve a problem for other people and uh-huh. they have a certain amount of resources to do it. And if they had more resources to do it, they would do more of that thing, right? Yes. And so th- yeah. they wouldn't necessarily just like reduce the amount that they spend to do the same amount. Right. One of the things that people do think is they think, well, if we use AI, it's going to remove um, positions. And, you know, we've talked about how those people's hours can be reallocated to the mission and serving or solving that problem for others. But another thing that I would add is that they can also do more quality financial work. Uh, You know, if you freed someone up from doing the repetitious work that's looking backwards, it's freed them up to use that information now to think forward. And so, you know, what I've found is that those people that have financial skills can then start to be trained in a way that looks at financial analysis and is using the application of, of knowledge and of financial patterns to help leadership make decisions for what's up ahead. So while tracking business expenses can often be tedious work, modern AI and automation drastically reduces the time that it takes. And that has big impacts, not just for nonprofits, but for any business that has limited resources, but an unlimited mission. Big thanks to Teresa for her on the ground insights. If you got as much from this conversation as I did, well, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Ramp for more expert tips on how your company can save time and save money. See you next time.